అది అర్థమైంది కానీ నేను అదంత మాక్సిమైజ్ చేసుకున్నప్పుడు ఇవేవి కనిపించేవి కదా నాకు ఇప్పుడు ఇది మినిమైజ్ చేశారు కదా ఆ ఇప్పుడు ఇది మాక్సిమైజ్ చేసి అయిపోయిన తర్వాత స్టాప్ కొట్టండి అంతే ఆహా ఏమ అవసరం లేదు ఇప్పుడు నేను అది నాకు తీసి ఇచ్చి బా మినిమైజ్ చేసుకోవాలి మినిమైజ్ చేసుకొని తర్వాత మీరు చెప్పుకోండి తర్వాత మళ్ళీ మాక్సిమైజ్ చేసి అయిపోయిన తర్వాత స్టాప్ అవుతారు ఇప్పుడు ఇప్పుడు మాక్సిమైజ్ చేసుకుంటా కదా ఇంకా అంతే అయిపోయింది ఇప్పుడు మీరు నేను చేసేస్తాను మీరు చెప్పుకున్న తర్వాత మళ్ళీ దాన్ని చేసుకొని మీరు స్టాప్ కొట్టేస్తారు morning everyone last time we have seen shock what did we see in shock we have seen what is shock what are the different types of shock what are the causes of shock and how do we what are the stages of shock in that stages of shock i have done with the first stage of shock today we are going to do the second stage of shock this is the progressive shock progressive shock so this is the second stage of shock called the progressive shock this progressive shock occurs when the when the blood volume loss of blood volume is about 15 to 25% it occurs after 15 to 25% loss of blood volume here compensatory mechanisms are not effective compensatory mechanism earlier we have seen the compensatory mechanisms were effective this negative feedback mechanisms were effective and they were trying to restore the blood pressure to normal but here in this stage of shock compensatory mechanisms are not effective despite intense vasoconstriction they are not able to maintain the bp and the cardiac output here the your cvs begins to deteriorate cardiovascular system and your vascular circulation it begins to deteriorate due to positive feedback cycles here the cycles will get positive so one leads to the other one leads to the other it's a vicious cycle so due to the positive feedback cycles timely intervention is needed here if you do not timely if it is intervention is not done and the medical treatment is not done at this stage subject will progress to refractory shock last stage of shock so timely intervention is very essential in this stage so what will happen let us see what are this progressive shock so progressive shock positive feedback as i told you positive feedback cycles one will lead to the other one will lead to the other and only deterioration will start occurring in this so positive feedback cycles cardiac failure because because of the severe decrease in the blood pressure arterial pressure is very less so both your systolic diastolic will fall the blood supply to the heart coronary flow decreases there will be coronary ischemia so when there is not much blood supply to the myocardium myocardium will become weak so myocardium can't myocardial contractility decreases a lot so this will lead to heart failure this acts as a positive cycle so this is cardiac failure one is leading to the other because blood supply to the heart is less uh, 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 heart is not able to pump out enough blood so this will lead to heart failure it is a positive shock then there will be vasomotor failure so in, in this the uh, blood supply to the when the bp falls there will be a lot of fall of blood pressure the blood supply to the brain decreases your cerebral blood flow decreases there will be cerebral ischemia so if this ischemia lasts for a long more than 10 minutes what will happen there will be failure of your vasomotor center vasomotor center earlier it was doing its work by constricting here the vasomotor center will not do that work so it will produce widespread vasodilatation so there will be widespread vasodilatation so when there is vasodilatation cardiac output and bp are further decreased earlier they are decreased but because of vasomotor center is not working they are further decreased so again it is a positive cycle
so blood uh, this is a point where body fails to circulate to the vital organs so blood is not flowing to the vital organs so bp and cardiac output are further decreased this is vasomotor failure the next one is the peripheral circulatory failure due to this sometimes this body ends up in this intense and prolonged vasoconstriction prolonged and intense vasoconstriction leads to hypoxia so when there is hypoxia the metabolites will start accumulating and this will uh, uh, and uh, and vasodilatation occurs when metabolites accumulate i told you earlier when metabolites accumulate vasodilatation occurs so capillary when vasodilatation occurs lot of fluid from the uh, vessels will leak out through the capillaries capillary permeability increases so when there is lot of fluid coming out only blood is remaining in the vessels and there will be pooling and sluggish blood flow so this will cause intravascular clotting occurs okay this is again one is leading to the other okay because because of this vasodilatation there is increased capillary permeability when capillary permeability is there sluggish blood flow will be there because lot of water is coming out of the capillaries so pooling and sluggish blood flow will be there and intravascular clotting occurs this is peripheral circulatory failure there is one more failure septicemia and toxicemia because of this prolonged vasoconstriction of the splanctic vessels hypoxia of the git occurs hypoxia of the git occurs hypoxia when when hypoxia is there it will damage the mucosa normal protective mucosal barrier is damaged in the gut so there will be in entry of the intestinal bacteria into the portal circulation so there will be entry of bacteria into the portal because the mucosa is damaged because of hypoxia mucosa is damaged and there will be entry of this intestinal bacteria into the portal circulation so in portal your even the liver because of hypoxia even liver is not functioning properly reduced function of the liver will lead to bacterial endotoxins and bacteria will reach the systemic circulation because even your liver is not uh, functioning properly reduced function of the liver will let the bacteria and bacterial endotoxins reach the systemic circulation leading to failure of arteriolar and precapillary sphincter function so your arteriolar and precapillary sphincter function is reduced it is failed and there is cardiac depression so uh, uh, arteriolar and precapillary sphincter function failure of this arteriolar and precapillary sphincter function and there is cardiac depression there occurs extensive vasodilatation because of this there occurs extensive vasodilatation when it enters this stage how much ever of treatment you give also it is, patient will not survive eventually is going to die that is why treatment is needed before positive mechanism set in so the same thing i want to tell you if i think because of the flow chart you can understand it properly so when there is severe fall of the blood pressure that is when the when i say less than 50 mm hg it is mean arterial blood pressure in shock the following changes will occur same thing what i have told you so because of the decreased coronary here the blood flow is less to the organs because your blood pressure is less everything is less so there will be decreased coronary blood flow first one if you look at the left decreased coronary blood flow when coronary blood flow is less there will be myocardial ischemia and there will be decreased myocardial contractility decreased cardiac output okay when there is decreased cardiac output there will be decreased cerebral blood flow also there then it will be cns ischemia that will lead to cns ischemia because when the brain is not getting enough blood it will lead to cns ischemia and there will be failure of the vasomotor center activity so there will be marked vasodilatation and venous pooling whenever there is vasodilatation your capacitance vessels will be filled with blood and the venous return to the heart decreases so this decreases the venous return this is a vasomotor failure the first one was a cardiac failure second one is a vasomotor failure the third one because of this prolonged increase in the sympathetic discharge sympathetic discharge prolonged increase in sympathetic discharge there will be spasm of the precapillary sphincters and the venules so it will act on the systemic circulation and on the git systemic circulation because of this there will be accumulation of the metabolites 
when accumulation of metabolites is there like uh, histamine and other other substances vasodilatation occurs vasodilatation occurs in the systemic circulation second way is stasis of blood in the capillaries i told you because lot of fluid is coming out of the capillaries there is stasis of blood in the capillaries intravascular clotting of blood occur the other one is when there is increased capillary permeability there will be increased translation more and more fluid is coming into the interstitial compartment so increased translation of fluid will be there so blood volume has decreased all this when the blood volume has decreased your venous return is decreased venous return is decreased your cardiac output is decreased okay so then the other one is on the gi this is systemic circulation i told you on the git hypoxia of git i told you this will give rise to damage to the git mucosa so gram negative bacteria enter into the circulation endotoxins are released so this will give rise to marked vasodilatation and whenever vasodilatation venous pooling will be there and the other way it, cardiac depression also will be there so last one we can also write it as septicemia or toxicemia shock also the last one so this is peripheral circulatory failure so the subject from one it is only positive mechanisms are happening so earlier negative mechanisms were happening in the first stage of shock and the body was able to correct it it was able to restore the blood pressure back here one thing is leading to other and the vicious cycle sets in so there is no proper treatment this vicious cycle sets in and if this vicious cycle sets in it has to lead to the third stage of shock okay so now so what will happen what will happen when in progressive stage of shock what should happen what should be the effect on your tissue level so in tissue level so pro in progressive stage there will be widespread tissue damage because there will be widespread uh, uh, deterioration of the tissues so leads to tissue damage so what should be the first organ to get damaged the, the organs which have high metabolic rate they should get uh, damaged first so liver is the first organ to get damaged then the heart and the lung because these have got high metabolic rate in high metabolic tissues these are so liver liver is the first one because liver has got high metabolic rate and also because the liver is also exposed to toxins toxins uh, 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 and bacteria from the intestine uh, through your portal vein so liver is the first one to get because it has high metabolic rate and also because of that it is exposed to toxins via this portal vein then there will be failure of the sodium potassium pump so decreased activity of sodium potassium pump across the cell membrane decreased activity will be there so sodium will get accumulated inside the cell and potassium will come out of the cell leading to swelling of the cell that is the second thing first is widespread tissue deterioration is there tissue damage is there then there will be failure of the sodium potassium pump third one will be reduced mitochondrial activity this mitochondrial activity will decrease in the liver first then to the other tissues then there activation of lysozymes lysozymes of boil, of of uh, lysozymes will sp split and release hy uh, hydrolysis which will cause intracellular tissue damage all over the body lysozymes by splitting and releasing hydrolysis will cause intracellular damage of tissues of, of the cells all over the body then there will be depleted nutrients depleted nutrient because there will be less of glucose mainly in the last stage of shock and also of hormones like insulin insulin is decreased and it will suppress the action of the insulin so depleted nutrients and depleted action of the hormones mainly for insulin then hypoxia poor, uh, poor delivery of oxygen to tissues will develop hypoxia so the tissues cells will convert instead of this uh, uh, cells will convert into uh, instead of oxidative metabolism cells will switch over to anaerobic metabolism and this will release lactic acid accumulation 
okay instead of because of poor delivery of oxygen to tissues instead of uh, oxidative metabolism cells will switch over to anaerobic metabolism so in this there will be lactic acid accumulation and also because of this poor delivery the uh, 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 there will be accumulation of carbon dioxide in the tissues because of this uh, um, hypoxia there will be accumulation of carbon dioxide in the tissue this will and this carbon dioxide will dissolve in water giving rise to h plus ions when h plus ions is there acidosis will result and this will lead to vasodilatation and moreover because of the uh, uh, sluggish flow of blood in the tissues carbon dioxide is accumulated in the tissues because of sluggish flow of blood carbon dioxide is accumulated in the tissues and this carbon dioxide will dissolve in water giving rise to h plus ions so this acidosis will occur this acidosis vasodilatation will occur as it is vasodilatation is there on top of it because of this another vasodilatation is there so it is a vicious cycle we are aggravating the condition this is a vicious cycle okay these are the effects of tissue level okay so in this uh, because this positive one by one this positive mechanisms are setting in and it is very difficult for the subject to come out of it so the therapeutic interventions are ineffective and patient will die eventually so it will lead to the third stage of shock it is called refractory shock why refractory it is point of no return refractory shock because it is point of no return once refractory shock the person enters the refractory shock he will not able to come out of it that is why it is called point of no return because positive mechanism is just a cycle has set in so whatever treatment you give there nothing is going to help so it is called refractory shock it is point of no return why it is point of no return there will be severe depletion of atp mainly which organs because of the high phosphate energy compounds are depleted where where are they depleted first they are depleted first in the liver then in the heart there will be severe depletion of atp compounds so uh, adenosine atp will be converted into adp adp will be atp is degraded into atp uh, uh, degraded into adp adp is degraded into amp diphosphate adenosine triphosphate is degraded into adenosine diphosphate diphosphate is degraded into adenosine monophosphate and this into adenosine so this adenosine will come out of the cell and convert into uric acid and this again it will not be able to it, uh, uh, go back into the cell so atp diffuses adenosine adenosine diffuses out of the cell and converts into uric acid and this cannot enter back into the cell so it can't enter back into the cell so there will be severe depletion of this atp and for the new adenosine to synthesize it will come out, it will be synthesized very slowly at the rate of 2% of the total cellular amount per hour so it is once the compound is depleted it is very difficult to replenish it back so because of this high energy phosphate compounds are depleted that is why it is called point of no return and this is refractory shock so when then there will be what are the effects on the tissues it will be leading to necrosis first usually the venous end of the capillaries will get necrosed first because it has got uh, uh, poor nutrition then the arteriolar end of the capillaries so first the what are the tissues that get damaged kidneys heart lungs liver all will get damaged so leading to necrosis so that is why it is called multi organ failure so when the kidneys are damaged it will end up in the renal tubular necrosis which will lead into renal failure and uremic death lot of urea will be inside our body and uremic death and uh, uh, kidneys will lead to uh, sorry and lungs will lead to 
short lung syndrome so multiple organ failure and eventually death has to occur so because of the uh, because of the depletion of high energy phosphate compounds so this refractory shock will occur and necrosis of the tissues will be there leading to multi organ failure and the death so we have seen three stages of shock first stage of shock progressive shock and refractory shock so how do you treat treatment of shock so how do you how should you treat them correcting a cause and helping physiological compensatory mechanisms so compensatory mechanisms if they return we should try to help in that so correcting a cause and helping physiological compensatory mechanisms what are the general measures general measures is a person with shock is usually cold we should not uh, 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 try to cover him up if you cover him lot of sweating will be there and it will lead to hypovolemia so a person of uh, should be kept at the room temperature so you should try to keep person with uh, shock is uh, most of the time is cold and you should never do the reflex warming by covering him up with the blankets or warming up using the water bottles you should not do because if you are doing that we are abolishing the sympathetic discharge we are and we are aggravating the condition so sympathetic whenever there is lot of sweating dilatation will occur we want vasoconstriction so we are preventing the sympathetic discharge abolishing the sympathetic discharge so you should never cover them up don't make, make the body warm okay so treadlenberg position this this slide is treadlenberg position the foot end of the bed is raised at least 6 to 12 inches so lot of venous return comes to the heart so it can improve the cardiac output so this is very essential in hemorrhagic shock and also your uh, neurogenic shock because in this your bp falls in those uh, hypovolemic shock and uh, hemorrhagic shock and neurogenic shock your bp is low so by this improving we can improve the blood pressure so this is called treadlenberg position and replacement therapy in hemorrhagic shock the best treatment is you should transfuse with the whole blood if the whole blood is not available you can use the plasma plasma will maintain the colloidal osmotic pressure so it will maintain the plasma volume but your hematocrit will be less with this if if the whole blood and plasma is not there use dextran 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 is is a large polysaccharide it will not leak out of the capillaries and it will it will pull the water from the interstitial compartment and uh, so plasma volume is maintained so dextran so uh, it, a person with burns or intestinal obstruction also the uh, uh, dextran is used with burns and uh, uh, intestinal obstruction and patient with burns this plasma if plasma is not available dextran is used in them so when do you use zinger lactate in hypovolemic shock we want to maintain uh, so iv infusion of fluid with balanced electrolytes should be given so ringer lactate is an ideal solution in hypovolemic shock if that is not there you can switch to normal saline so these are the replacement therapy now sympathomimetic drugs when should you use them sympathomimetic drugs are not used in hemorrhagic shock because in hemorrhagic shock already your sympathetic system is working well so you should not use in hemorrhagic shock but sympathomimetic drugs are used in neurogenic shock in naphylactic shock because there is lot of vaso dilatation in them so you want to get the vaso constriction so use dopamine is first drug of choice dopamine should be the first drug of choice because dopamine will vaso dilate renal blood vessels renal vessels and elsewhere it will do the vaso constriction so if Uh, if uh, like adrenaline and noradrenaline will vaso constrict the renal vessels also it will do vaso constriction generalized vaso constriction so if the renal and uh, renal vessels are also vaso constricted we might end up in uh, renal failure and oliguria and shock so dopamine should be the first 
line of treatment because it will do vasodilatation of the renal blood vessels elsewhere it brings about the vasoconstriction and dopamine has also got good uh, inotrophic effect on the heart so dopamine if dopamine is not there you can use adrenaline or noradrenaline okay then there is oxygen therapy oxygen therapy is given in patients with hypoxia when they whenever there is hypoxia you give oxygen therapy but it is not useful in your anemic uh, hemorrhagic shock or stagnant type okay so oxygen therapy is used in hypoxic type of shocks glucocorticoids glucocorticoids are very useful in anaphylactic shock because glucocorticoids will uh, give strength to the heart in the last stages and this glucocorticoids also will stabilize the uh, lysosomal membrane so the enzymes will not leak out from the cell and the other important uh, 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 function of the glucocorticoids are it will maintain the glucose metabolism of the severely damaged cells so this is the treatment so first is the uh, it should be maintained uh, the uh, temperature uh, room temperature should be maintained the patient should be kept in cold you should not warm up the body okay so that is important Redlenburg position and we have seen the replacement therapy and we have seen the drugs so this is about shock so we have seen different types of shocks we have seen uh, uh, what are the causes for different types of shocks and what are the uh, uh, stages of shock so first stage because there will be uh, negative feedback mechanisms will be there so patient can recover second stage treatment is very essential if that is not there subject will go into positive feedback cycles will enter and then it is very difficult to bring the patient back from that so this is refractory shock and the treatment we have seen